Mitchell. What are you looking for you down here? Hilda said you were... Here. <clears throat> I'm sorry for the pain I've caused you. I'm... I'm sorry for everything. I don't think I understand what's going on. I'm leaving here. No, I did not shoot Jake. I know this is hard. I you? wouldn't do something God like knows that. In that moment that you probably thought you had a reason for doing what I you did. I didn't do anything to truth. him. I have told the truth. We know that you went to see Jake that night. We know that he would have never set you free. By your own admission, there was a struggle, and a neighbor stop saw it. you leaving that courtroom Please later than you claimed to have left. It. You have to stop For it. God's sake, Marley, admit it. Tell this courtroom what really happened. You shot Jake McKinnon, didn't you? No, no, no. My daughter please. didn't shoot Jake. I did. This winter, Falcon Beach heats up SoapNet. You won't want to miss all the drama that happens in this steamy resort town. Falcon Beach. It all starts with a two-hour premiere. Saturday at 11 a.m. on SoapNet. Very much. I really appreciate it. Got it. What? T. Cunningham's phone number. He left Juno. He went up to Blue, what? Blue Mountain. Joined the force up there. So now all I have to do is call him, get the straight dope, and Frankie. move on. Get to the bottom Frankie. of this thing. Frankie. Frankie. What? First of all, relax. You've gotten yourself all worked up. Well, of course I'm worked up. To get this much closer to the truth is very exciting. Second of all, you're not sure that this police officer is the one that actually signed the report on Kathleen's death. How many T. Cunninghams do you figure are Alaskan cops? Look, all in all, I just think it would be better for you to take five minutes and calm down. I am not going to calm down, Ryan. Not until I get the truth. Because if Kathleen is still alive, my whole life is going to be turned upside down anyway. And Kath... Kath... What? What? I don't know. I just don't know, but I have to do this. You're really scared about this, aren't you? Oh, of course I'm scared. What it... Cass, tell you about Kathleen. It's not what he told me. It's what he told Kathleen. I don't understand. Where are you going? I'm not sure. I just know I have to get out of here. Out of the house? Out of your life. You shot Jake McKinnon, didn't you? You shot Jake McKinnon, didn't you? Oh, no. No. Miss Hudson, My please. daughter didn't shoot Jake. I did. John, what are you saying? What do you mean? Order. This courtroom will come to order. Your Honor, I demand that Mrs. Hudson be removed from these proceedings immediately. Order, please. This is another obvious and desperate ploy to disrupt this trial. Your Honor. After everything else that defense has tried to pull, to have the defendant's own mother stand there and suddenly say for no reason that... I said order. Order. order! I had a very good reason for wanting Jake dead. you, Ms. Graves, but you're about the only thing I can hear. This court will come to order. Bailiff, you will restrain Mrs. Hudson. Be assured, Mrs. Hudson, one more outburst and I'll have you jailed for contempt. Don't you touch my on, wife. Mike, Mike, Mr. Hudson, not gonna help. sit down. Mike, John, she doesn't know what she's saying, man. This sit down. has been too much for her, you understand? Yeah. Sit down. Come on. <coughs> 
This is crazy. Why would Donna suddenly start? Do you know something about this? Stace, you do, don't you? Request a sidebar, Your Honor. Mr. Winthrop, join us up here, please. This comes as a complete surprise oh, to me, too. right. What are you accusing me of? Where is your sense of ethics? Your client is entitled to a defense, not these increasingly desperate attempts to save her at any cost. You don't seriously think I'm responsible Your for Honor, this? it is obvious that orderly proceedings are out of the question. Please. With the court's permission, if I could put Mrs. Hudson on the stand... What? I'm sure I could get to the bottom of this. This is outrageous, Your Honor. Do I have your permission, Your Honor? Yes, I'm granting your request. Uh, I have to know exactly what's going on. Thank you. I do not want the jury to hear any of this. Neither do I. Mrs. McKinnon's testimony will be interrupted. The jury taken out and sequestered, and the courtroom closed to reporters. You each will have a chance to question Mrs. Hudson, and I hope we'll find out the truth. I can't take any more. Gonna stand on that bridge and keep my eyes down below. Whatever may comes, and whatever may goes. That river flows. Mm, that river flows. How's it going, Pete? Hi. Oh, it's great. Fine. How are you? <laughs> How's it going with you? I like your voice. My voice? What, that? I mean, if I'd known that, that somebody was listening, I'd have uh, sung something, I don't know, more about... So, uh, this is the place? Yeah, yeah, this is it. This is it. And you like it? I mean... Oh, yeah. It's working out okay? It's great. It's, it's excellent. Why? Well, I'd heard so much about your new business, I thought I'd come check it out for myself. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, uh, I, I was just about to run an errand, but uh, it's kind of meaningless in the, you know, scheme of things. So. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just do it later. I could do it later. Do come what on. later? The errand. Uh, come on, I'll show you all no, over no, the No, 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 Dean, wait, wait. Go ahead and do your errand. Well, Mac can show me around. Oh, oh. All right. I get it. Is he here? Uh, no. No, he had, he had some other stuff to do this afternoon. Oh. Well, I know he doesn't have glasses today. Uh, what's he up to? Oh, it's, it's funny you should ask that question. He's uh, helping Jenna with her stuff, things. Her things? Yeah. Why? Because she's moving into his house. Ooh, it's cold out here. Well, here we are. It's not much. This is incredible. But we call it a palace. Let me grab that from you. Door. So, how about a soda? Sure. That would be great. Sit down, relax. I'll be right back. So, how many people live here again? I mean, besides you and your mom and sister and brother? Well, let's see. There's my mom, me, Grandma, Amanda, Jamie, Paulina, and the kids, Allie and Stephen. Oh, sounds like there's a lot of traffic around here. Yeah, we were going to put speed bumps in the hallway, but couldn't get the zoning rights. Oh, I hope I don't get in the way. No, no, I, I, I don't I know. That. I'm sorry. That's right. It'll be great. A wonderful company. I'm sure you will be. So, you're just walking out, leaving town? No, I don't think so. Not right away, anyway. I need some time to figure out my next move. I see. And, uh, and where do you intend to stay while you figure out your next move? The Commodore Hotel on Addison. You're going to stay there? It's fine. It's a pretty sleazy part of town, don't you think? Well, it's what I can afford. What you can afford? I'm not going to use my inheritance money, Rachel. Why not? I think you know why not. If you believe you really are Max's daughter, yes, then... Yes, I do. Why not use the money, then? Because you have your doubts now. Oh, yes, I do. And if you decide to disown me, then I'm going to have to get used to living the way I used to live anyhow. So. But no one's made that decision yet. Rachel, I am not taking money from this family until I'm accepted as Fine, but that doesn't mean that you have to move out of the house. <sighs> yes, I do. I have to. Look, I know how wonderful you have been to me. That's why I have to go. Oh, my God. 
if that makes sense to you. Yes, it does. Look, all I am right now is a reminder of what Ken... of how Ken and I betrayed you, and I can't stand to see that look on your face anymore. I do care about you, Rachel. I know that's hard for you to believe right now, but I do. Paulina. Oh, and just so you know, everything that you bought me and all the clothes and jewelry you gave me, I, I left them all in my room. All I'm taking with me is the things I had with me when I came here. When you came here for the job is Stephen's nanny. I have my memories, though. So when you were telling, uh, telling me about what Cass told you about Kathleen, it sounded as if you knew about it from first-hand experience. I do. Oh. I was there. Come again? <laughs> it's, it's when I first came to town. Um, something really bad happened to Cass. Um, he ran off and I tried to find him. There was this incredible storm. Uh, he was delirious. He had been out in the storm all night and, and was sick as a dog. And uh, he looked at me and for some reason thought I was Kathleen. And the way he looked at me and the way he spoke to me, it was like nothing I had ever known. And I knew right then and there that this was a very special man and that he had a very special thing with this woman. And now she may be back. Why? If, if what they had was so great, then how come Kathleen wants Cass to think that she's dead? I don't know, right? I don't know anything anymore. Well, I do. I know that Cass loves you. He wouldn't do anything to hurt you. Hey, you guys are going to handle this. I promise. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're right. Thank you. Hey, for what? For this uh, Himalayan tea. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's got me thinking a whole lot more clearly. I'll be able to deal with this phone call now. Blue Mountain Station House. Yes, I'm looking for a T. Cunningham. Mm-hmm. That'd be Tom Cunningham. Okay, you have two guest rooms to choose from. You're kidding. Nope. One is closer to the kids' room, so you might hear the occasional crying and knocking of toys against the wall. Oh, that's okay. I don't mind. And then the other one's closer to my room, in which case you might hear the occasional <laughs> copy of Moby Dick being thrown against the wall violently, but I'm a lot more fun. Well, whatever you think is more convenient, Matt. Paulina. Huh? Hi, Matt. Uh, Jenna, this is Paulina. Yeah, we've already met. Right, at the New Year's Eve party. Where are you going? Just to take care of yourself. Hey, what... Paulina. Obviously, I'm not going to talk you out of this. But, uh, I will need to keep in touch with you while I decide what to do. I suppose... So I'll give you a couple of days, and then we'll talk, all right? Fine. Take care of yourself. No, 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 it'll be fine. No, I mean, if your family's having a problem. Hello, Jenna. Hey, this is Corey. Well, we're looking forward to having you stay with us. Thank you for having me. I just, um, I hope I won't be in the way. Is Paulina going on a little trip? She just needs some time to herself. Mrs. Corey, you know, if it would be easier, I can go oh, back Oh, no, don't be me. silly. I told Felicia that we could look after you, and we will. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go up and check on your room. Okay. Shall I help her? No, I don't think so. I get the feeling she'd like to be alone. Don't I love Hudson? You may be seated. 
Before we start, I want to make myself very clear. This is a very serious breach of normal judicial procedure. I'm allowing you to take the stand and tell your story. But no tricks. Understood? Yes. I'm not even sure where I'm supposed to be leading her. Ask her about the time that she and Jake were partners. Mr. Winter? Marlon Love McKinnon is your daughter. Yes. You love your children. More than my own life. How did you feel when Marley got involved with Jake again after they were divorced? I was miserable. Everybody knew that. Why were you so miserable? I despise Jake. I still do. Why do you feel that way about him? He and I have a long history of not getting along together. I never approved of the things that he did. Could you be more specific, please? Well, for one thing, after he and Marley were divorced, he blackmailed me into setting him up in a video business. How did he blackmail you? He promised that he would stay away from both my daughters if I backed him financially. So you became partners? Yes. How did that work out? Uh, surprisingly well in the beginning. I was going through some very painful personal problems, and Jake was very kind, or so it seemed. Would you mind telling us about these personal problems? Michael, my husband, told me that he was leaving me for another woman, and he moved out. I object, Your Honor. What does this have to do with anything? I'm overruling you, Ms. Ray. The witness will be allowed to continue. So you and Jake became close? Yes. I would actually say that he was a friend. And what caused this friendship to end? Michael and I were considering a divorce. He didn't really want it, but I didn't know that at the time. And Jake seemed to be the only person that I could turn to when I needed somebody. And the day that the divorce papers arrived, I went to try to talk to Michael about it, and he wouldn't talk to me, so I took that as a sign that that he wanted the divorce. Um, and when I went home that night, Jake was there. And then what happened, Mrs. Hudson? Michael, I never stopped loving you. I, I was just, I was just so distraught. And, um, I told Jake that I wanted to be alone, and I went upstairs to my bedroom. Then I signed my name to the divorce papers, and of course I started to cry. And all of a sudden, he was in the room. And he who? Jake. And what happened next, daughter? <laughs> he started to kiss me. We made love. I love him. I love him. Tom Cunningham, right. Why would you need to speak to him? Uh, my name is Frankie Frame, and I'm calling from Bay City outside Chicago. You're a long way off, Miss Frame. Yes, I am, but this is very important, sir. It sounds it. I need to speak to Officer Cunningham about a plane accident report he filed several years ago. A report from years ago? Yes, it concerns the death of a Kathleen McKinnon Winthrop. <laughs> you know, I, I sure wish I could help you, ma'am, but uh, old Tom, he retired from the force 
Must be two years now. Uh, that's okay. I'd still like to talk to him. Do you know where he moved to? I don't rightly know. Uh, you know how I could find him? <laughs> Dom liked to travel. I, I doubt he put down roots anywhere. Uh, he, he must be getting his pension check somewhere. Do you know where they're mailed? Nope. He took his pension in a lump sum. <laughs> There's got to be some way to find this guy. Seems like a ton of trouble to go to over an accident report. Uh, why don't you just read that report? Old Tom was pretty thorough. Yes, I know he was, but I still would like to talk to old, old Tom myself. Um, if you can think of any way for me to get in contact with him. Uh... I'll call Frankie Frame in Bay City, right? Right. Uh, I'm in the book. Mm, nice talking to you. Very nice talking to you, too. Thank you. <sighs> So, what now? There have got to be other ways to track Kathleen down. And I'm gonna find them. You all right, Tom? Yeah. It looks like that call bothered you some. Nothing I can't handle. It's me. We might have a problem. Concerning Kathleen Winthrop. I got it, Hilda. <laughs> Hi, Matt. Hi. What's up? Yeah, this was not my idea. No, <laughs> it was mine. And That's I right. talked Dean into it, and good pal that he is, he said sure. So here we are. Yeah. May we come in? Yeah. Uh, Jenna's settling in. So. I know. That's why we came over. That's why you came over? To see how everything was going. Thoughtful as it should be. Hi, Jenna. Very. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Dean. What's up? Matt, this place is fabulous. Well, it's home. <sighs> yeah, and the artwork is wonderful. So maybe we should meet... Oh, by the way, I was going to call you, but since I have you here in the flesh, um, when is the next poli -sci test? I know, it's next week, but I don't remember what day. Tuesday. Really? That's soon. Tuesday's right after Monday. Maybe we should cram together one night over the weekend, huh? Well, I'm in pretty good shape for the test. I'm going to review on Monday and then ace it. I'm free on Monday. It's pretty subtle, isn't she? Uh, let me get back to you. I'm going to show Jenna her room. That's OK. Dean and I will wait right here. Great. Ready? Yeah. This way. <clears throat> so uh, you like the house, huh? It's beautiful. I wanted to tell you something. So are you. You're kind of cute yourself. Yeah. Not as cute as Matt, though, right? Oh, come on. I had to get him to help me with that test. Oh, sure, sure. Poli sci, that's your life, I understand. <laughs> and you were an angel to come along with me. It's no problem. No but, problem. well, I'm okay now, so if you want to go back to the loft, it's oh, no, 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 I don't, I don't want to go back to the loft. Okay, well. This, this way. Objection, Your Honor. Shocking as Mrs. Hudson's statement is, these events took place long before the shooting. They had nothing to do with it. I'm assuming that the witness will supply the connection. Proceed, Mr. Winthrop. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. Hudson, what happened after you and Jake made love? My husband and I became close again. I never wanted or loved another man. And I realized that immediately what I'd done was a dreadful, dreadful mistake, and I told him that it must never happen again. You told Jake that? Yes. And how did he respond to that, he to you breaking it off like that? He wouldn't accept it. He kept after me to tell him that he meant something to me. And did you say that? No, I didn't, because he didn't. I. I was just so lost and, and ashamed, and I... You what? I decided to have nothing to do with him and to pull out of the video business altogether. And you pulled out financially as well? Yes, I did. How did Jake feel about that? He was furious. He decided I was out to get him. How did his fury manifest itself? He kept reminding me over and over that he knew something about me. 
that could make me lose my husband and my family. You were frightened of him. It, yes, I was. And it wasn't just for me, either. What do you mean? Well, about that time, Marley came back to Bay City. And she seemed determined to reconcile with Jake. Did you do anything to try to stop this reconciliation? I did everything I could, short of telling her about me and Jake. But nothing worked. They got engaged? Yes. Did you try to talk to Jake? Yes, I did. And what did he say? He said that he would do exactly as he pleased, even if it ruined Marley's life. He used those words? Well, not exactly, but that's what he meant. Objection. Sustained. Strike the witness's last answer. Did you try to do anything else to prevent Marley and Jake from getting married? In the end, I didn't have to because Marley realized she didn't love him anymore and she decided to call off the wedding. And I was so relieved I did something very stupid. What did you do, Mrs. Hudson? I told him that his engagement was falling apart and I laughed in his face. What was his response to that? He said, if Marley called off the engagement, that he would tell both Marley and Michael what happened, and he would destroy me. And he would have. And my whole life was at stake. Everybody that I loved, and I I couldn't bear to lose Marley and Michael. I had no choice. So, despite the positive sales. This is the only room you have, huh? We got a smaller one down on the ground floor. Uh-huh. Well, then I think I'll keep this one. Lisa probably has a decent view, right? If you like air shafts, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I'll just keep this closed. Suit yourself. Uh, wait a second. What? No TV? Not at these prices, honey. <laughs> You're lucky you got hot water. Miss this one? Just a few days, she said. I can make it. I know I can. What if someone sees us? Oh, well, what? Would they have rules about kissing here? I thought Matt was your friend. He is my friend. He's my friend. And this is how you repay him? Oh, wow. I, I knew it. See, knew I, what? That in your head, you actually think that you have something going on with Matt. Just give me time. He is about as interested in you as you are in me, okay? You're wrong. Except the difference is you should be interested in me. You, All you, right. You're exactly the kind of guy I don't need. Oh, really? Well, don't knock it, honey, until you tried it, okay? You're cute. Uh -huh. You're fun. You're unpredictable. But I need stability right now. Dean. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. When did you become middle-aged? You wouldn't understand. I wouldn't understand. I understand. I understand that you are going to be missing out on a hell of a good time, okay? <laughs> That's what I understand. Oh, Dean. This is Corey. Hi. Hi. Does uh, Matthew know you're here? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, we were just waiting for him and, and Jenna upstairs. Oh. This is Lindsay. This is Corey. Hi. Hello. You have a lovely home. Matt and I are in a couple of classes together at BCU. Oh, I see. He's been a big help, introducing me to people and showing me around campus. Oh, good. Are you uh, new here in Bay City? Yes, and uh, I love it. Cambridge was such a mad scene. You, you were at um, Radcliffe? Oh, anyway, uh, 
I think Matt's a terrific guy, and uh, he's just been a super friend. Good. Yeah, he's, he's been a good friend to a lot of new people in Bay City, me, Jenna. He's, yeah, he's a terrific guy. I wonder what's keeping him so long. And this is the room where all the intellectuals gather at night. Really? Yes, reading aloud to each other from the great books, engaging in lengthy philosophical debates. And you're kidding, right? Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> Actually, the last time I was here, I think my mother and I were debating what videos to rent for the weekend. It's about as lofty as it gets around here. You really are funny, Matt. Ma'am? I think so. Hmm. What's this? Oh. Studs Lonigan. Mac would kill me if he ever caught me leaving it open like that. Yeah, so would my mom. She loves books and the people who write them. Mm, sounds like Mac. This was mm. his favorite. Is that why you're reading it? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, makes me feel closer to him. Yeah, I know the feeling. If you ever want to talk about your mother, I'm only a room away. Thanks, man. You know, I know she would have liked you. But I guess I should get back to my room and unpack. Yeah. Okay. This way and let's oh, see. Matt. Yeah. I just wanted to say thank you. No, no more thank you. No, no more thank you. No, it's not just me. for <laughs> having me here. What is it? Well, I know that Dean isn't crazy about me. and You always stick up for me, and I, I really appreciate it. Dean likes you. He just has a big mouth. No, I think it's because I'm from a convent school or something. What is well, he just, he thinks of me as a self-righteous do-gooder, you know, the convent kid. Well, then he's nuts. Well, I'm glad you think so. I mean, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? Is it? Sure. I mean, you may do good, but you has got to like you. When did Jake McKinnon make these threats against you? Right before he was shot. And what happened after he left you that day? I was out of my mind with fear. And I decided I had to do something to stop him. How did you plan to do that? I came to you. I, I wanted you and Frankie to try to get something on him. And you said you wouldn't do it unless Michael was involved. So obviously I couldn't have that. So what did you decide to do instead? Well, I told Michael that I had to go shopping that evening. And instead, I went to the loft. We'd been invited to a Halloween ball. And I'd rented some costumes for us. And mine had a blonde wig. So I, I put the wig on so that no one would recognize me. And I went to Jake's. And he was there alone when you arrived? Yes. Marley had already been there and left. He laughed when he saw me and said he knew why I was there. And I told him I'd offer him any amount of money if he would just get out of my daughter's life and keep his mouth shut. And what did he say? He said that my life with my husband and my daughter was over. And then he laughed at me again. And he just kept laughing. He wouldn't stop laughing. What happened next? He turned around. And he went back to work. He was, he was viewing some footage and the music was very loud. I knew that I... I had to do something to stop him. And I knew where his gun was. And he turned around just as I was pulling the gun out of the drawer. But before he could get to me, I pulled the trigger. I shot him. I wanted him to die. Order. Order. Mr. Winthrop. No 
further questions. Uh, Ms. Graves, do you wish to cross-examine? Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Hudson, what time did you arrive at the loft? Time. That's right. You must have some idea. Well, it was evening. It was probably around 9 p.m., I suppose. You've been here every day, haven't you? Yes. So you've heard all the testimony about the shooting? Yes. You love your daughter very much, don't you, Mrs. Hudson? Yes, I do. Enough that you would do anything for her? I believe I've already testified to that. Well, this trial's been going on for weeks. Your daughter's been going through hell, and all this time you haven't said anything. I thought she would be set free. And now you don't? It's not that. It's just that I... I couldn't live with it any longer. How were you able to live with it this long? How could you just sit by doing nothing while your child was in pain? Because she was in pain. And I didn't want to add any more to her burden. Until now. Yes. Why? Why did you choose this moment to unburden yourself in this courtroom? I couldn't let it go on. Jake McKinnon had already done enough to her. Counsel will approach the bench. It's Donna. He's just confessed to shooting Jake. God, Vicky. Mike. I'm sorry. Hey, Marley, can I get you anything? I've heard enough. Your Honor, I am not finished. She may just be trying to save her daughter. We have a confession, Ms. Graves. It has to be dealt with. Look, I understand that. And I'd be out of my mind not to declare a mistrial after what's gone on here today, at the very least. Is that what you're going to do, Your Honor? Sit down, both of you. Marley, I had no idea. No. Neither did I. A final decision will be made after a review of Mrs. Hudson's testimony. But as of this moment, I see no reason for this trial to continue. Therefore, I'm suspending proceedings to consider dismissal of all charges Marley McKinnon. As for Mrs. Hudson, I'm instructing the bailiff to place her under arrest for the attempted murder of Jake McKinnon. So how do you think of me? Well... There you are! Hey, you're still here. That's right, we were waiting for you, remember? Your mother said we might find you in here. All settled in, Jenna? Yeah, Lindsay, I'm getting there, thanks. Good. I was wondering, Matt, if you want to go get a bite later, maybe afterwards we could go to the club. Oh, yeah, I think that's a great idea, especially because I happen to be free all evening long. Want to go, Jenna? Yeah, sure, why not? Great, I'll get the coats. Great, I'll help you. We have uh, business to discuss. Be right back. It was awfully nice of Matt to let you stay here. Yes, it was. That's how he is. Anything for someone in need. I suppose. I hope you realize how busy he's going to be at college. You know, classes during the day, parties at night. Not too much time for anything else. Yeah, I know he'll be busy. Good. As long as you know. Then you do remember me? Yes, you and your husband were in here just the other day. He showed me those pictures. Uh, yes, that's right. And I have some other pictures to show you. Could this be the woman? Well, the hair seems wrong. What about the face? I'm just not sure. OK, if you could remember anything at all, no matter how insignificant it seems. Well, she did say something, that her hotel didn't have a flower shop and that it was in Chicago. The hotel room was in Chicago. You know something? What? That woman out there, she looks just like her. Wait! Wait! I don't understand a word of what you're saying. Having problems with your phone service? Wait, excuse me. Oh, what's the matter with you? I'm... 
I'm terribly sorry. I, I thought you were somebody else. Well, not as sorry as I am. I'm very sorry. Hey, you have got to calm down. You said that this woman was in a hotel in Chicago that did not have a flower shop. Boy, you really need to find this woman, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I really do. Outside line, please. Yeah, hey, listen, if anyone tries to call me, I am not to be disturbed. Got that? Good. Grant. Hi, it's Paulina. <laughs> You're kidding. Well, it must be mental telepathy, huh? Listen, how would you like some company? Right now? Great. Because I am just dying to get out. This court is adjourned. All rise. Right. So wait a minute. I, I, I have nothing to say. All right, just, just please get out of my way. Please, Would you get out of my way, Mike? Michael. This winter, Falcon Beach heats up SoapNet. You won't want to miss all the drama that happens in this steamy resort town. Falcon Beach. It all starts with a two-hour premiere. Saturday at 11 a.m. on SoapNet.